Hi everyone and welcome to Who Through the Curb and today I have Randy and we I guess we're missing Ruby and Mr. Mr. Ducky. Ducky. Uh yeah, yeah they Puck missed me right today. Around. Uh and Randy's coming from uh to us from Delaware and I am coming, Rob, coming to you from New York City. Uh today we're gonna be talking about I guess it's not it's not something that's weird but it's definitely not spoken about but we're going to be talking about on how high income americans really mix with poorer people except in restaurants like applebee's um i dealt with so it's this is interesting because throughout my my gym years running uh especially goes gym on 54th street you used to have a bunch of high end people, actors and stuff like that going in there only because it was actually uh, a point where everybody met at. And, it, and the crazy thing was it was a franchise, but even tourists that came from wherever, uh, let's say Japan, or whatever, they made it a point to come visit the Gold's Gym location. Like I was in so many people's pictures because they had this big ass Gold Gym uh, thing on the wall. So everybody wants to take a picture there, of course. So they could say I was at New York City's Gold Gym. And of course, since I was always there in the front, hey, do you mind taking a picture of this? Not taking the picture, but in the picture. So I was in a lot of people's pictures. But there was also a lot of actors. And it seemed like they met there, but they didn't really mingle with anybody outside of themselves. Uh, and you could tell in that, in, in just the gym aspect, it, they segregated each other. They all worked out in the same place, but they didn't associate with each other however i think that's throughout america itself not only america but i'm sure in all and every other country is like that as well but it's funny thing is they meet in restaurants like applebee's like they'll go eat with poor people but they will not eat anywhere else what do you think on that is that true to that food <laughs> and, and you're you're remember you live in a different place where things are slightly different. I live in New York City, which things are much more clear. You can see, you can really see rich people do not associate with poor people unless you work for them. Well, I can give an example, a good example. The owner of the dealership I used to work for for almost 10 years, son, he's taking over. I was talking to somebody and he walked up and was, you know, hit me on the back. Done them shoulder, shoulder, shoulder massage. Hey, Randy, how you doing? Yeah, and stood there for a minute, listened to him. And I was talking about we, me and my ex-wife at the time, wife, had went to Walmart the day before, and we were like, "Yeah, we talked to Walmart." And yeah, yeah. And I was like, "You know what I mean, Tim?" He's like, "I ain't never been to Walmart in my life." <laughs> and you're talking about a family who their next door neighbors Howard Stern and and Tiger Woods in Florida, like. Yeah. He, to see his grandfather, the last person in our dealership before his dad took over, he said he pulled up in his grandfather's driveway, and there was Howard Stern, Howard Stern standing there talking to his grandfather. You know, you know, um, Rick Porter, of course, um, great guy. He's passed away now, but he was the owner of the dealership, and he uh, also had race horses. His horse is the one that finished, I think, second in the Kentucky Derby. And they had to euthanize him right down the track. Right back. Um, uh, he, it was interesting that Tim had never been to a Walmart. This is this is uh, Pablo, by the way. Pablo. Yeah, Pablo's going to see her in Barnes. I'll pick him up. <laughs> He's a wiener dog. Um, but uh, you're going to I, – I, I was so shocked to hear him say somebody had never been to Walmart. I'm like, are you kidding me? He's like, I've never been to Walmart in my life. Well, because they can't – well, some more, some rich people – they can't associate themselves in Walmart because they think so. They rather go. They rather go somewhere where they're gonna pay triple the amount for a shampoo than go to 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 Walmart and buy a shampoo that's triple the time less than what they're gonna buy. For. They're exactly. okay with that, but they feel a lot. A lot of rich people they just look at us and they go and they look down at us. Because yeah. I throughout my life, I worked with a lot of people like that. And because times are the way they are now, 
you really, they hide it now. But back in my days when I was younger, they were open about that. Yeah, now you can see. I had, I had, yeah, I had somebody um, tell me, uh, this is, and I'm going back years. When I first started my magic career, I worked for Rickless. Rickless was the owner of uh, McCrory's and Oddlot. I, I started in McCrory's and I met Rickless and his wife was a, uh, uh, Pia Adora, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And she, not Rickless, Rickless was really cool. But she w- one time said, I don't know, and this is in front of a lot of people, I don't know how you people live like that. But meanwhile, we're you finding your store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she was a bitch anyway. Thank God she died. Oh my God. That sounds like beyond <laughs> bitch. That sounds like another word I can think of. But, but people are like that. And, but remember, in that time, People were more open. They weren't going to get chastised for what they said. If she yeah. would say that now, and somebody decided to make a big deal about it, they'll forget about it. They'll cancel her out, and she'll be over every newspaper and, and like uh, uh, tarred and feathered. But they don't. They don't, uh-huh. they don't. They don't. They don't. You know, back in the days, that didn't happen. You can say whatever you want, and this is why I appreciate back in the days more than now because I knew where everybody stood. Like I didn't mind, I didn't mind you hated me because I I did business with a lot of people who really didn't like me, but, but you know they what? liked Good. they liked me because I made the money, so they stomached me. Easy those days, I made the money, so I was okay. He's not but, bad as a, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but I wouldn't be invited to their mansion to go eat and and stuff like that, uh, because I wasn't part of their clan. You know, I was just the reason why they could do that yeah. <laughs> because I was making the money. They should have but, built. They should have built your own estate on their estate. Thank me. You. you know. You know what I'm saying? And it's weird because here in New York City, you experience that because you won't. You'll see a lot of young people down here. I live in the downtown area, in the Lower East Side. So uh-huh. yeah, there are rich people there, but they're like the the artistic, trendy hipsters and stuff like that. So they're a little different, like. Actually, they come from money. It's not their money, but they come from money. But if their parents were here, they wouldn't eat in Delancey. They would go uptown and eat where, I mean, midtown and eat where things are much more expensive and poor people don't go and eat. But their kids who are little hipsters and stuff like that, they, they'll they eat wherever. But it, they have a different mindset because it's not their money. It's their parents' money. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But rich people who made their own wealth, they definitely segregate themselves. Unless, of course, if they go to an Applebee's or, you know, I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of other uh, franchise restaurants out there that people like to frequent that they don't have any, uh, you know, no money. So meaning rich and poor people go there, but poor people probably will do it on a special occasion and rich people will just do it on every occasion. Yeah, that you're right. And it's a shame that that's how the world is, but it's been like that since the beginning of our country, you know, it's, it's always been like that. You've always had the people who matter and the people who don't matter. Um, no, and you're right. I, and the thing is, I, I got to experience that. And at the end of the day, I tell people all the time, you know, people always talk about racism and stuff like that. You know, that's all cool and dandy. I didn't look at it as they didn't like me because I was Puerto Rican. They just didn't like me, period. They, yeah. I wasn't part of their class. I now think if I, if I had a couple of million dollars, I think it didn't matter if I was Puerto Rican or not. I will be uh, invited because I'm in their social class. Um, and I think sometimes people... I'm, there is racism, but I think people confuse sometimes there's also social class. You see what I'm saying? Well, and that's the perfect I thing. think sometimes social class or social classes, they don't really care about what color you are, where you come from, but they do care about how much money you have. How many zeros are at the end of your number? To right. Make- and there's several different social classes. So you could be a millionaire. And you can't hang out with the billionaires. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? 
You be a thousand there, but you can't hang out with a dollar that dollar there or whatever you're calling. You, you know what I'm saying? So hit pieces. It's it's funny how nobody talks about or they do, but they focus more on on different things where they because you can't really uh, shun upon social class because I'm sorry. Uh, I think I would probably be a little snooty too. I probably wouldn't, or maybe I will live in a low east side because I promised myself that again. If I if I became uh, into a different, if I got into a different class of money, a money structure, that I will still remain the same, and I will continue to do everything the way I did it before, not because I have more money and do you know and go waste it somewhere else. So I I think back in the days, I think it's a better it would be a better statement. And I would have probably moved out of Low East Side and moved somewhere else with my class. And when I mean class is not, not, not uh, Puerto Ricans or anything like that, but uh, a social class that I'm comfortable with. Or your zeros line up with everybody else's zeros. Exactly. And it's not that I'm looking down on any uh, minority because I am a minority theoretically. Right. So I'm looking at social. It's yeah. kind of, it, it makes sense because you don't want to say, hey, we're going to Hawaii in December. You want to join us to somebody who's living paycheck to paycheck? Right. So I get your point. Doesn't make it probably theoretically right. But right. In, in, in the spirit of this is how the world is, it's right. Unfortunately, it's the way it is. But the the funny thing is on how, you know, places like Applebee's will bring people together. They they won't talk to each other, but they'll eat in the same place. Eat in the same spot. <laughs> right. Until somebody starts belching or blowing their nose at the table. Then like, and, the, and the funny, and when he is something funny, I right. have told people with, when I was in Gold Gym, I have told people who have, I won't mention names because, you know, I don't want a lawsuit here and there, but there were actors who had money and they were famous where I have told people, are you done talking down to me? Cause when they talk to you, they talk down to you. And I literally put them on the spot. I'm like, Oh, are you done talking down to me? And they looked at me because they didn't realize that's what they were doing. Maybe they didn't mean to do that, but that's what they were doing. You said that to them? <laughs> yeah. Straight Good, up. For you. <laughs> Good for you. So, and it's, I'd have been like, who the fuck you think you're talking to? I wouldn't have been, you damn done time talking to me? I'd ask who the fuck they think they're talking to. Because well, people be, like that, they mean it. I had, right? I had to be. Sorry, I didn't realize it. No. <laughs> I had to be politically correct. So I just kept it at, are you done talking down to me? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm, no, I'm not different than you are. If I cut you, you're going to bleed red. Just like if you cut me, I'm going to bleed yeah. red. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody's fat. If you cut them, they're not going to bleed gravy. They're going to bleed <laughs> blood. Exactly. <laughs> so it's it's just a funny thing on how how the how the social classes uh, they just shun on everybody, but but they're willing to look the other way. So there's there's an exception to the means, right? When it comes to eating in a certain place, yeah, you know what. I don't like that place because the little hood, what I like the place, but it just happens to be in the hood. We're going to go eat there. <laughs> it's cr- Have you ever ran to Keanu Reeves up in uh, New York? No. They say he's, he's always seen walking and riding. And well, somewhere. yeah, he, I I read about, remember, they, they hang out. I live close to Soho. I just, before I used to walk around more, but now since I'm doing all these different things, like I literally don't even know. I'm getting sun from the window because that's that's when I get to see the sun. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I don't get to explore anymore like I used to. But yeah, now there's there's some down to earth, uh, and I'll throw some people out there. Um, Eric Roberts, bro, and you know. If he hears this, it's great. Kudos to him. Eric Roberts was a down to earth. I met him. He was doing Law and Order like a lot of years ago at Ghost Gym. I met him in Ghost Gym, and he just talked to you, hung out with us. Um, and at one point, he just bought us all lunch. Like he was a really cool dude. And 
you know, it's people like that. Sigourney Weaver, she was cool. Like she frequented uh, the Gold's Gym. Uh, the Rock was cool. He just didn't want to be bothered while he was working out. I'll tell you another dude who's really cool, uh, who was with us for a whole month when he was doing the championships and he was doing uh, ESPN, Magic Johnson. This dude is the coolest dude ever. Like, he came in. He said, what's up to everybody? Uh, of course, he always sat down with the boss because me and my boss, we said, shared the same office. He was always there talking about basketball with them. But he would, when he would go up and, and work out, he would talk to you while he's on the bike, whatever. He didn't care. But we got to, I got to spend a whole month with him. He was really, really like down to earth. Uh, Derek Harper, I did those old school players. <laughs> Remember when he played for the Knicks and Dallas back in the day? Derek Harper. Oh. Um, there are a lot of cool people. Even uh, 50, he came in, but he's he's kind of dark. Like he's just coming in, put his, put his hood on. Go do his thing. He'll say what's up, like with his little nod and stuff. So he he acknowledged you, but he just wanted to be by himself. Is he you still know? trying to play the gangster? Uh, well, let me tell you, fifty. He just want to be left alone. Uh, let me tell you, he's a very out of. Uh, there's a lot of rap, not a lot. There are very few rappers like himself who knew what to do with their money, and this guy's a successful guy. So, uh, to me. And then again, he may he may still have that little gangster thing going. But remember, I grew up in New York City too, so I would I would say sometimes I act up too. So we kind of both act the same. But he's a down to earth dude. You know what I'm saying? I probably wouldn't want to cross him, but he's he's a cool dude. <laughs> he's yeah. a cool dude. You know he um, me, right? Huh? You know he went bankrupt. No, but he still got some money. Yeah, I mean, you always got to look at it. A lot of people go bankrupt to hide things. So not every bankrupt, not every bankruptcy makes you broke. That doesn't mean that you're broke. You're just it covering your ass from something. Category of zeros I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> so you always got to look behind because you'll see a lot of people, yeah, I just came bankruptcy, but yet you still look at Trump. Trump has money up his ass. How many bankruptcies has he been in? It's Point always a bankruptcy is just a way to protect certain assets from something else. You see what I'm saying? That doesn't mean you're yeah. broke. It's just you're protecting your ass. And it's just like we discussed a while ago. Uh, it's a loophole. You know? So this is why before they had on the loophole. Before they had just straight up chapter 11, now they have chapter 7 and chapter 11. The judge got to look at your papers. And look to see if, before you just did Chapter 11. Now, if the judge says, well, I think you have enough money to pay your shit, we're going to put you in Chapter 7 and work something out uh, to all the people you owe money to. But if the judge rules, nah, you know what, we're not even going to do that. We're just going to throw you straight in Chapter 11 and protect you. Now you can go into Chapter 11. But it's not like it used to. Back in the days when Trump used to go bankrupt, it used to be straight in bank uh, Chapter 11. So now you don't owe nobody money, but yet you have money in your pocket. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And instead um, of seven so, years, you can get a brand new house in less than a year after filing bankruptcy. No, there are people, listen, people People think that bankruptcy, okay, so bankruptcy has this this uh, bad rep that is, oh, I'm bankrupt, I won't be able to do nothing for seven years. That's, that is so not true because I know people that that went bankrupt on several occasions, claimed bankruptcy, chapter 11, and then later on, have better credit than me. Like, within a year or two. You see what I'm saying? So, it's just like a, a whole, like, they throw it out there. Of course, you don't want everybody who's in debt to just claim bankruptcy because and then you just mess up, you know, uh, the economy or, 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 you know, the debt ceiling on, on how much money you owe to different companies. Because once you do Chapter 11, then you don't owe shit. You know what I'm saying? They clean you up. But six months later, you'll have credit card companies offering you credit cards. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, but back to, back to on the associate, on how people associate with, uh, rich people associate with, with uh, poor people, there are certain places where they'll associate with you. And one of them is, is um, 
the restaurants. Uh, for whatever reason, it's about food, man. It's about the food. You know, they or even in some sports events. But even in sports events, they won't sit with you. They'll sit down in the in, in the their boxes or in the, the, yeah, the box seats. They'll go inside and eat. And Applebee's eat. is about the food, man. Applebee's has great food. Some of these full service chains, man, has some good shit. They do and they have alcohol readily available and just they do, they do. Um, but this is something that's not new and it's always going to be, we're always going to segregate ourselves before we used to segregate ourselves. Uh, so either Spanish people used to live together in one area and then you have that, the American blacks living together on one area. And then you used to have this type of uh, whites in this area and the other type of Italians and Bensonhurst. So you used to have people segregating each other. Now they become a little bit diverse, so they all live with each other. But however, what they haven't done is social classes never live with the poor people. Like the rich, the, the people with money. As soon as they get the chance, they're out. They're out. They're going to build a big house somewhere. And I, that's one thing, if, you know, if, if I ever got that, I would build me a house in the middle of nowhere in a mountain somewhere. Yeah. So, but even that, Rich people don't do that either because they don't want to live secluded. They, they, they want to live. They want to live amongst everybody, but away from uh, people that are not in their social class. They want to live amongst everybody so they can say, "Look what I have." Yeah, absolutely. Look at me. But with that said, um, you know, it's not. It's never going to change. The more money people have, the more they're going to segregate themselves with their own. Uh, and it has nothing to do with color, race, or where you're from, what island you're from, uh, what continent you're from. Money is a different color. Because when you have money, and let's say you're Puerto Rican, you become green. So just like a white person who has money, they're green. They're no longer white. They're green. Like your shit looks like <laughs> <laughs> the, the color is different when you have money. <laughs> Get her done. With that said, uh, don't forget to join us. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Don't if you're on YouTube, don't forget to share. Don't forget to like, and don't forget to follow us, uh, depending on what platform you're on. Uh, and that's it. Uh, we'll catch you on our next segment. Thank you.